What is going on YouTube? My name is Joshua Wade and as you can see things are a little bit different. If you are new to my channel you wouldn't know that but uh, if you've seen my other videos I have got a whole new setup going on here so I apologize in advance if I make any mistakes. Um, so that's probably going to happen. So today I basically I wanted to make a video. Um, a lot of my friends have been asking me how do I write uh, my piano parts among other things, uh, my MIDI parts for certain R&B hip hop songs or even country songs that I put piano kind of in the background on and I wanted to go through and show you really quick how I can do that with easy keys. It's super super easy and it really does help kind of get me out of maybe like a dry rut of I can't really think of anything. So without blabbling on too much which I do often let's hop into easy keys. So as you can see here I have got uh, PreSona Studio 1 open and I've already put easy keys in. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to switch this to just, I guess what I want to go with, just a regular grand piano for uh, for this tutorial. What's a grand piano? Sounds good. Sounds pretty good. Um, the first thing that you're going to notice is this section down here. You can add notes. Now, one of the things that I always do is I will unclick follow host. Um, it comes defaulted to follow host, and I use them both ways. I'll uncheck follow host and sometimes I'll check follow host depending on what I'm doing but if you don't uncheck this you'll hear doubles playing back and I'll show you that here in a second um, so anyway we're gonna grab and just hit this little plus right here to add chord to song track okay so it defaults to C every time and if you have follow host set you can just hit spacebar and it'll play it for you. So that would be a problem, and I'll show you that really quick. That would be a problem if, like, say, this is a MIDI part, which I'll show you that also. So this video might get a little lengthy, but just bear with me. Say that, okay, I like this part, even though it's not really a part. We'll just say, I like this part, click and drag it to there. Now when you hit spacebar on Presonus or whatever DAW you're using, now you're hearing that, you're hearing that note twice. So once I've kind of written my part up here, I'll go ahead and uncheck follow host so that way whenever whenever I play it it doesn't play both of them um, the follow host comes in handy whenever you're using this section down here so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this for now it comes in handy to write your parts so say you've got a beat or you've got a song in here and you know the chord progression you want it to be C and then we'll change this to D and then we'll we'll add just a couple more just to whatever this is gonna be like the the worst chord progression that anyone's um, written in a long time, I'm sure. Okay, so C, D, G, E. Okay, so now you can play it inside of Tune Tracks Easy Keys to kind of get a reference on if you like it or not. Okay, the next hit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> not really. So if I highlight these, if you like them the way they are, you can highlight them, you can grab these, and it'll put the chords there. Most of you probably already know that. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to delete that. Now with these highlighted, you see the little use browser MIDI pops up. For some reason, it won't pop up if there's not a note down here. If you don't have one selected, it won't pop up. So if you click it, you can go through and your library uh, might look a little bit different than mine. Over the past few years, I've collected a lot of um, add-on packs and stuff like that. I don't know where they even come from to be honest with you. Most of them do come from um, the Easy Keys library or from Tune Tracks, something that I bought. You can buy the expansion MIDI packs, something I bought years ago. So we'll say we'll go with like a basic 4-4. Four, four. So now that I have these selected, let's say we want an intro. Now I can play this. And you see it changed these. So whenever I have used browser MIDI selected, it's going to show these um, with this variation up here. Like this is variation one. So if I were to play this one, it'd be a little bit different. That sounds horrible to be honest with you. So let's switch to something else. Let's go to like ballads or something. I know this is just a tutorial, but that is freaking killing me. Okay, so let's go like verse 80s pop. Okay, that might be kind of cool. Okay, that's cool. And you're already starting to kind of create around your song because these chords, I picked these notes, these chords, just thinking like, okay, I know my song, 
pretend in your mind that this is a whole song and you're just trying to add piano, add some flair to it, or write around a beat, as long as you're getting the notes right, as long as you know the, the progression of the notes, you'll be able to write this way. Now, be careful of a couple things. I can hit replace and it just throws it on there, right? Which is cool, so now whenever I play it, you hear how it's faster? This is the part where I wanted to say you have to kind of be careful and it can be a little finicky if you're new to this kind of writing style. So if I select uh, use browser MIDI again, it'll show me the same thing. Right, we selected that one. So even though our tempo in our session is set to 120 and the tempo of this is set to 120, what's messing it up is this right here. Whenever you're working with MIDI um, in this type of way with easy keys, whenever it says half normal or two times, it's meaning of the original tempo. So like you can see right here, this is 66 BPM, but because we're trying to get it to double the speed, pretty much 120, it's not gonna, it's gonna normal speed at 60, if that makes sense, or 66 rather. So I've noticed with this thing, you have to kind of, sometimes you have to play around with half time because if you didn't want it to, you know, once you hit replace, once you play it, see? So the way you heard it originally might have been at half speed. So you have to kind of experiment with it a little bit. Now, if I hit replace, we'll see if it does replace it at halftime. So if I were to click and drag this over here. See? You just have to kind of get experimental with it and play with it for a little bit. Um, I've one, one of the things that I really like to do, whenever you select this on the DAW, this is not what I like to do, by the way. I have a the train of thought like a field mouse. You know, I just hop from one thing to the other. But anyway, uh, I'm going to delete this out of my DAW. Now, whenever you select these and you hit delete on your keyboard for whatever the protocol delete is for your DAW, it's not gonna delete it out of here. And again, with the follow host thing active, I can still play it. So again, just remember that you do have the follow host, you do have an arrangement right here, so that will still play on top of whatever you're doing up here. So you wanna right click it to get rid of it, and I'm gonna remove it. And you see how the use browser MIDI went away, but check this out, you can still play them. That's crazy, right? And what's really cool, so say that you're working on a MIDI part, right? Or you're working on a beat and it's, um, okay, so we'll change this to like, We'll change this to 90, okay? So we'll change our BPM to 90. Preview and original tempo is selected right here. Let's uncheck that. So now it's gonna play everything at 90 BPM. Make sure the host is selected, uh, follow host is selected. So now play it. Okay, that's cool. So let's play it at normal. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's write a song. Or let, you know, yeah, let's write a song. Let's scroll down to what is this? Modern Power? No, Hard Rock. Okay, intro. This is normal speed, so I can half time it if I wanted to. Let's half time it. Okay, let's not do that. Let's normal it. Okay, that's cool. So now watch this. I can click and drag the MIDI onto it and not only does it grab the note information but if you see these little lines and again I don't know what doll you're using but these little lines that's pedal sustain pedal information so it really does help out a lot if you're somebody who isn't necessarily great at playing the keyboard like myself I'm not that good at keyboard it kind of gives you a really good idea on like hey you know maybe a piano player would probably do this with a sustain pedal or play it a certain way Okay, so let's go into a verse. Cool, I like that too. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit, click and drag that mini into here. Mid, mini, mini, midi. And then let's see how it flows from probably right here. Okay, so you see that transition was a little bit abrupt. So with PreSonus, I can go to edit. And let me just close out of that for now. And there's where I am. 
So let's scroll over. I'm holding shift and scrolling for the windows, by the way, scrolling on my mouse. So that abrupt change, remember when I had mentioned the sustain pedal um, is really cool that they put that kind of automation in there with the MIDI. Sometimes it can be a pain in the ass because it just, it just caused an issue if we were trying to write something. Obviously that's not gonna how you're, that's not how you're gonna transition into a verse if that was a verse, right? So if we go here to the end, we can pull up our sustain pedal on off. And you see right here, that's a really hardcore change because there's a pause right here. So I can grab, let me see if I can do this without messing anything up. No, I don't wanna do that. I actually wanna edit it. Okay, so I don't want it to do that. So I'm gonna delete that one and not panic when it does that because I know I can bring it back. So let's try that. See, okay, so with that, actually I would probably, to be honest with you, I would probably pick a different chord progression for this if I was going into a verse like that, but um, just for this tutorial. See? So you keep this in mind, the sustain pedal, if you're clicking and dragging MIDI out of easy, uh, easy keys and you hear a blip like that or a glitch, check your sustain pedal because that has been the number one reason so far, knock on wood, that I've had little issues like that where there's not a, a smooth transition. So that's kind of it, guys. I mean, feel free to you know rewind, pause, uh, of course, subscribe, because I'm uh, past 500 subs now. That's right. And <laughs> so, of course, continued support is greatly appreciated. It's free for you. It helps me out a lot as a content creator. If you guys got anything out of this, uh, hit that like and subscribe questions leave them in the comments i try to get to everybody's questions my notifications are a little bit messed up right now so i'm not actually getting uh, people's questions on my notifications i don't know what the deal is because i have all my notifications turned on uh, but anyway if you guys like this video um, like and subscribe and if you have any questions leave them down below i will get to every one of them and yeah i will uh, catch you guys in the next video take it easy